Previously on A Moment of Grace. The name Zacchaeus means clean and pure. So when this little boy was born, their, his parents had a vision for him. But obviously Zacchaeus had his own plans. The scripture says he decided that he would be a tax collector. Now, if Zacchaeus had not been so determined to see Jesus that day, the crowd would have discouraged him. And he would have simply returned home, never met Jesus, and who knows, he may have died in his sins. But thank God he was determined. So determined that he, he found a way to see Jesus in spite of them. He found a way to run ahead of them, to climb a tree. He found a way to look beyond them, to look over them, and to see Jesus in, say that, in spite of them. Some of you are saved in spite of us. You're too quiet this morning. I said some of you are saved today in spite of those of us who came before you. Amen. You had to look beyond us. You had to look over us. You had to look past us. In order to see Jesus. And thank God you did. Amen. And so Zacchaeus was able to look past them, above them, in spite of the crowd. And he saw Jesus. And his life was never the same again. Thank God. All it takes for men and women to be radically, totally saved and transformed forever is for them to have a true, true revelation of Jesus. If they can only see Jesus for who he truly is and experience his unconditional love for them, they will be radically, totally, completely transformed. And you and I are the chosen vessels of God of Christ, by whom Christ wants to reveal that kind of love to them. He could not because of the crowd. He was of short stature. He was short. I don't want to spend too much time there because that will be another sermon. So let's go to verse 4. So, so he ran ahead and did what? He climbed up into a sycamore tree to see Jesus while he was going to pass that way. So he's looking beyond, above, and past the crowd, right? In spite of them, he sees Jesus. Next verse. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him. I like that. I'm going to stop and make, uh, make some comments here. What did Jesus do? When he came to the place, he did what? He looked up and saw him. What do you see when you see sinners? Do you see people? Or do you just see sinners? Do you see him for who he is? Or do you just see sinners? Do you see him or do you just see a statistic? Do you see her or do you just see a religious obligation? Do you really see him and the condition, her and her condition and her needs? You see, one of the reasons Jesus was so effective in bringing people to God was because when he looked at sinners, he saw him, he saw people. He saw real people with real needs. And the Bible says when he saw people, he was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. May God help you and me to see people and be moved by compassion because in seeing him, Jesus saw his needs. But not only did Jesus see him, the Bible says Jesus looked up and saw him. Jesus, contrary to what religious people say and what religion teaches, contrary to what you might think, contrary to what the devil may have told you, Jesus Christ does not look down on sinners. Jesus doesn't look down on people he's trying to win to himself. You, you got to hear me. You're not listening to me. 
I said he does not look down on people. Religion teaches you to look down on sinners and tell them how disobedient they are, how 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 much they deserve judgment, and how God is so angry with them, and da 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 da. Jesus Christ comes and instead of looking down at Zacchaeus, he looks up at him. Now you need to understand. For all of his life, people have been looking down on Zacchaeus. I told you he was short. And not just short, very short. So every time he was around people, every time they were looking, Zacchaeus was always the one having to look up. So physically, they were always looking down on him, but he's not just physically short, he's morally short as well. So those who are taller than him, and that's just about everybody, are looking down on him and then the religious folks are looking down on him so all of his life this man has been looked down upon and Jesus comes the only one who are really qualified to look down on him looks up at him you need to understand amen this is something that we need to realize. Too often the reason we're not able to win people to our God is because we look down at them. We look down at our family members who are not saved. We look down at our family, our friends who are not saved. We look down at our co-workers who are not saved. We look down at our workers who are not saved. And we think we're better than them and we look down upon them. Look at what they do. Look what they do. But Jesus teaches us not to look down at sinners, not to look down at people we're trying to win. Jesus teaches us to look up at them. And when you look up at people, what you're doing is you're showing them great respect. When you look up at people, you're honoring them. When you look up at people, you make people feel good about themselves. And when you make people feel good about themselves, they're going to feel good about you. And when they feel good about you, they're going to feel good about your God. And when they feel good about your God, they're going to feel good about what your God has to say to them. Are you listening to me? Let me repeat. The, the, the model that Jesus presents to us for winning our family, our friends, our neighbors, our co-workers who are sinners is that we are not to look down upon them. We are to look up. In other words, we are to honor them. We are to respect them. We should let them know God loves them and that we like them. God loves them. Say so God loves them. And we like them. And sinners, some sinners are very fun to be around too. Okay? Now, we let them know we love them, God loves them, we like them. And you know what? When people feel you love them, you like them, you honor them, guess what? When they feel good about when they know you feel good about them, they're gonna start feeling good about you. Doesn't mean you're approving their sins, but you're honoring them as people. You're not just seeing them as sinners. You're seeing them as people. Amen? So Jesus honored them and then and, 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 did, and did, something, did something that nobody expected him to do. Not only did he look up at Zacchaeus, a sinner, the next thing Jesus did was he literally said to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, come down quickly for today I must stay at your house. Now watch what's happening. Because remember, everybody's looking at at Zacchaeus. He's in the tree, right? Zacchaeus is not popular at all. In fact, Zacchaeus, as far as these people are concerned, is so bad a person, he's not even allowed in the synagogue. Zacchaeus is someone everybody has always looked down upon, criticized, and religious people in particular. All right? The last person they expected that Jesus would, would even talk to was Zacchaeus. And now, 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 so Zacchaeus is up in the tree. These folks, if they saw Zacchaeus, I'm sure they did, they see this short man who they already have been making fun of. He's now in the tree. You know that they're laughing at him. You know they're making fun of him. You know they're saying, look, look, <laughs> look at that fool. And so Zacchaeus was already feeling small. Now he feels smaller than he's ever felt before. And with all of that happening in him, all of those negative emotions and feelings, he doesn't know how Jesus is going to react to him. 
He doesn't know whether Jesus is going to join the rest of the folks and just condemn him. Jesus looks up at him. And then Jesus says, Zacchaeus, 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 come down quickly. Because tonight, I have to stay at your place. Nothing is more important to me right now. Zacchaeus, I have to stay at your place. I can imagine when Zacchaeus heard that, he grew two feet. Suddenly, amen. If not physically, in his whole mind, in the way he saw himself. Wow. And so the scripture says he, 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 he made haste. He didn't waste time. He didn't want Jesus to change his mind. So he came down quickly and he received Jesus joyfully. Hallelujah. In saying to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, I want to spend the night with you. What Jesus was really saying to Zacchaeus is, you know, I know all about you. I hear what they say, and I know a lot of the things they say are true. But none of that makes a difference to me. I'm seeing you. And Zacchaeus, I want to be your friend. When Jesus says, I want to spend the night with you, he says, Zacchaeus, I want to be your friend. I like you. Not just I love you, but I like you, Zacchaeus. And I would like to spend one of the last days of my life on earth at your house. I want to be your friend. I like you. You need to make sinners feel like you like them. And hear me, because you may not know it. Jesus may be a stranger to you today. You're not a stranger to him. He knows everything about you just like he knew Zacchaeus. He knows your history. He knows what you've done. He knows that in so many ways you fall short. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your shortcomings. He knows the mess you've made of your life. He knows a lot of things that are wrong that you're doing right now. He knows all of that. But he still says to you, I still like you. Amen? And I still want to be your friend. Will you receive me? Zacchaeus received him joyfully. I pray if you have not yet received Jesus, that you receive his offer to be your friend. You will make haste in doing it, and you will receive him joyfully, because I guarantee you there's no friend like Jesus. Amen. Amen. And the Bible says, greater love than this no man has. And that which Jesus demonstrated in that he will give his life for his friends. Hear me, because we're learning from Jesus how to win these people. And I want you to see that one of the things Jesus is saying, and we need to get this in our spirits. We need to get this in our minds. Jesus is a friend of sinners. He's not walking around here judging them, condemning them in this dispensation. No, 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 no. He's a friend. And what he's offering to them is to be their friend. Even as he saves them and changes them, he's their friend. The Pharisees accused him. The, the complaint they had against him was, he's a friend of sinners. He eats with publicans. Man, they were condemning him for that. But the truth is, they were actually declaring one of the things about him that makes him who he is. And that we celebrate. Jesus is a friend of sinners. And so when you share the gospel, let the people who don't know Jesus know that he's their friend. And the Bible says he died for his friends. In other words, they were sinners and they were his friend. He didn't wait until they got saved and said, now you're my friend. No, he considered himself their friend. Even when they were sinners, he considered us his friends. Even when we were sinners and died for us when we were sinners because he was our friend. And he gave his life for us. And they need to know that. Still to come on A Moment of Grace. And hear me. This is what Jesus wants you and me to do. He wants you and me to start looking up at sinners. Honor them. Love them. Attach value to them. Don't make them ashamed. Don't condemn them. 
look up at them. And even when you have to point out the sins, do so in a way that still honors them. Hello, I'm Bishop Darlington Johnson. Are you looking for a church that is warm and welcoming? Where the people are committed to building community and developing devoted disciples of Jesus Christ? Then Bethel World Outreach Church is the church for you. At Bethel, the Word of God is made simple and clear so that you can understand it and apply it to your daily life. The presence of God is experienced in powerful worship and soul winning is our business. So come and join us this Sunday at Bethel World Outreach Church, City of Hope. Hope to see you soon. Next verse. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, He has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zac Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. Do you see the transformation? For me, one of the most beautiful parts of the story is right here, where Zacchaeus who before lived his life, he became the chief publican, the number one gangster in town. I hear me? Who mastered the art of exploiting people all his life. That's what he has done. And look at the transformation that has taken place in his life. I give half of my goods. You know a man is saved now when he's, when he's willing and ready to start parting with his money. Amen? And not just a little bit. Half of this, you know he has been transformed. You know he's converted. You know he's not the same man anymore. All of his life he had been taking, taking, taking from others. And now he says, you know what? I'm going to give half of what I own. And look, Jesus, I know I have stolen from some people and cheated and everything I have I didn't earn. And I'm going to do my best to find as many people as possible that I'd wrong. And I'm not just going to give them back what I took. I'm going to give it back fourfold. I don't know how much he had, but I got a feeling after he had done all of that, he, would, he probably wasn't going to be rich anymore. But that was okay. Because what he really, 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 really wanted, he had found. Amen. Amen. What he really, really needed, he had found. He didn't need all that money anymore because he had found real life. And he found that life when he met Jesus. You and I have an opportunity to help people, many of Zacchaeus is to have the same experience to meet Jesus, find life, and be transformed. And you know what's interesting about this? The Holy Spirit didn't tell us what Jesus said to him. All we know was Jesus offered to have to stay at his house. They sat at table. The Holy Spirit doesn't tell us anything Jesus said, but the Holy Spirit points to the transformation that takes place in this man's life. And so I was asking the Lord, how come you didn't tell us anything Jesus said to him? And I felt the Lord saying to me was because I didn't want the focus to be on what I said. I wanted the focus to be on what I did. You didn't hear me. Because too often we think witnessing is all about what we say. When the most powerful way by which we present Jesus to the world is by what we do. There's a place for saying, but if all we do is say and we never do, we're not going to get that kind of result. So Jesus said, the Holy Spirit didn't mention saying or words because I didn't want the focus to be on what you would say to sinners. I wanted the focus to be on what you should do. And what did Jesus do? He looked up at Zacchaeus. He became a friend of Zacchaeus and he invited Zacchaeus to dine with him. And hear me, this is what Jesus wants you and me to do. He wants you and me to start looking up at sinners, honor them, love them, Attach value to them. Don't make them ashamed. 
Don't condemn them. Look up at them. And even when you have to point out the sins, do so in a way that still honors them. That's what Jesus wants you and me to do. Look up! And then he wants us to be their friends. To be their friends. Not their accusers. Not their judges. Not their condemners. They're friends. And lastly, he wants us to invite them to our table so that they can fellowship with us and with Jesus in us. Yes. Jesus wants us to do what? Look up. Say look up. At them. Be their friend. Invite them to our table. To fellowship with us and with Jesus in us. And if we would follow Jesus' example, I really, really believe we will be amazed at how many people, without you having to condemn anybody, will experience this kind of transformation where knowing Jesus becomes more important to them than anything else in their lives. What was the question I started with? I asked you, if this was the last week of your life and you knew it, who would you spend the night with? What would you spend your time doing? Here's Jesus' answer. The last week of his life, he went on a search and rescue mission looking for one soul. And on his to-do list for that week, one of the top things on that to-do list was to bring salvation to the house of this stranger. May God bless you with another week. May God bless you with another month. May God bless you with another year. May God bless you with another hundred years if you want to live that long. But whether it's one week, one month, one year, a hundred years, Jesus teaches us that the most important thing you can do for anybody in your lifetime is to give them salvation. And the most important way you can spend your time is to spend it as he did on a search and rescue mission to bring salvation to those who are lost. Let's look at the last two verses. And here's Jesus' response. Today, Salvation is come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. I want all of us to say, let's say that with some excitement because there's an exclamation mark in the spirit. Jesus is not just saying today. Jesus is excited. Jesus is rejoicing because you know the Bible says there's rejoicing in heaven over one lost soul that comes to Christ, right? So man, this is, Jesus is on cloud nine, all right? So let's say the way we think Jesus may have said it. Come on. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. <laughs> Next verse. For the son of man has come to seek and to save. But it's the most important thing Jesus says I can do with my life for these last seven days. I can go on a search and rescue mission to save that which was lost. Say lost. It's interesting. Often when Jesus talks about sinners, 
He doesn't call them sinners. He calls them lost. Because that's how he sees sinners. Not as people deserving wrath and anger and judgment. But he sees sinners as people who are lost. People who have gone astray and have strayed so far away from home, they don't know how to get back. People who have strayed away and now are in the dark and they're in danger of being lost forever. So Jesus goes on a rescue mission that took him from heaven to earth and then on earth to Zacchaeus' house in order to recover this lost soul and bring him back home where he belonged in the presence of God. That is the mission we have. That is the opportunity we have. That's the privilege we have. May God grant you and grant me the same privilege and the same opportunity. And may we embrace it like Jesus embraced his call. So that like him, we would be able to say and mean it. Zacchaeus, whoever Zacchaeus is, I must spend the night with you today. I must carve out some time in my busy schedule. I must change my plans because I recognize there is an opportunity now to bring salvation to your house that I don't want to squander. You know, there are times in people's lives when they're more open, more ready to receive. Jesus knew that this was one of those times when Zacchaeus was most ready and he was not willing to squander that opportunity. As we go about our business, we're going to interact with people and people are at different levels of readiness. But some people are at the verge of salvation. Let us not squander the opportunities when we recognize them. If we have to change our plans, let's do so. So that like Jesus, we can bring salvation to those who are perishing. We want to thank you for spending this time today with our family at Bethel World Outreach Church. You just watched a portion of this message by Bishop Darlingston Johnson, our senior pastor. We hope this broadcast today was an encouragement to you. We believe that the Word of God is a powerful seed that can bring true transformation in our lives, which is why we want to sow the product on your screen into your life. Simply call the number on the screen or go online right now and we'll send you this message in its entirety for free right away. Just ask for the offer number on your screen. We believe God wants the best for your life. We hope you'll continue to watch and support this broadcast so that each week people can be blessed through God's Word. Don't forget to call or go online now to receive this free offer. May God richly bless you.